Great discoveries come with great challenges. But how do we find the inspiration to keep going? After six years of working, we got the first sample that seemed to be suitable, but it vanished within less than a second. So this was a real disaster. Well, the challenge was to make anything work, ever. And the answer is sometimes things work when you least expect it. When you find something which is controversial, you can ask the question, how did you stand up for criticism from top of the line scientists? I mean, Nobel laureates. And how did you get around it? Our, our discovery of the aquaporin water channels that brought the Nobel was a serendipitous observation. We were not even looking for this. We did it backwards. We found the answer and then we had to find out what the problem was. And my answer is, it is very simple. I was right and they were wrong and I knew that I was right. The reason that I continued is that these little, little, little evidences that we collected uh, showed, showed progress. So it gave me the feeling that it's not time to stop. That there is still, still a sort of hope or expectation. And when it became true, it was even better than a dream. How you want to inspire the coming generation? It's difficult now for funding. And this is unfortunate because science is so exciting. The technologies have advanced so we can do some amazing things. One of my duties is to share the joy with the young people, to encourage them that the system will get better and do everything I can politically to improve the system. You young scientists are our future. You're very important to us. Uh, my inspiration is that I would like to use uh, my research at LN from, from PhD to uh, develop my, my country, Thailand. I'd like to make my country uh, better, have a better life. Always meeting different people and speaking the same language in a calm environment and calm atmosphere, I think it is great. Uh, how do you want to inspire other people, um, young researchers and your colleagues? One has to be curious. Curiosity, first is property, second is curiosity. Third is curiosity, even more, and the fourth is passion. You have to have two things to be successful. One is broad knowledge. You have to know many, many, many things. Oh, that's not enough. You have to develop at least one expertise, one peak. Be an expert in one thing. And I promise you, that if you have broad knowledge and one peak of expertise, you will have a wonderful career, I promise you. To be a scientist, to work on a problem that is interesting for me and be paid for it and even have a lab, what can be better? So if it, if it has some difficulties, one has to think how to cross the difficulties or how to go to another direction or how to give up. So how to give up was my last choice and I didn't. <laughs> You don't have to be perfect to do something important in science. In fact, very few scientists are perfect. None that I know. <laughs> what I learned today is the formula to success is different for different people. But what works for everyone is curiosity, persistence, and loving what you're doing.